Joan is seven years old. She enjoys games and having fun. Joan is happy, and she enjoys life. But what would happen to Joan if her parents couldn't take care of her? Joan is handicapped. Joan is mentally retarded. And because she is mentally retarded until a few years ago, Joan might not have had a choice of where she would live if her parents couldn't care for her. Joan would probably be placed in an institution where she might spend the rest of her life. Now, there are many types of institutions. Some are modern with lots of space and trees. Some are old with crowded facilities. And some are a combination of old and new. People who are mentally retarded are not the only handicapped who might have to face this situation. People with developmental handicaps, such as cerebral palsy, could also be placed in institutions. But today, a way of life called normalization is being introduced for the assistance and treatment of handicapped people. Normalization means that those with handicaps are given a chance to live and work in surroundings other people enjoy, to live their lives to the fullest extent their handicaps will allow. To be helped to lead a more normal life is not a gift that people who are not handicapped give to those who are. A normal life is a right handicapped people have because they are human beings. Now, it's easy to say we'll let all handicapped people lead a normal life, but it's not so easy to accomplish. Before we look at normalization, however, we need to see just what developmental handicaps are. Developmental handicaps can be mental handicaps, physical handicaps, or a combination of both that limits a person's natural abilities. Examples of these handicaps are cerebral palsy and mental retardation, which are always present, or epilepsy, which may not disable a person at all times. To get a better understanding of these handicaps and what normalization may mean, we will use mental retardation as an example. But everything that is mentioned regarding normalization can be applied to everyone with a developmental handicap. There are 280 known reasons or causes for a person to be mentally retarded. Poverty can cause mental retardation because poor expectant mothers often receive little or no prenatal care. Bad diets before birth and while they are growing can cause children to be mentally retarded. Other causes are accidents or injuries which result in brain damage. Inherited and genetic factors or chemical imbalances like PKU can cause mental retardation, but these causes may be prevented by research. An important fact to remember, however, is that mentally retarded people learn the same way everyone else does, only more slowly. The mentally retarded can enjoy a life that is nearly normal, but to guarantee this will require a few things. The most important requirement is a home. Homes are necessary if anyone is to be in good mental and physical health. But where will the retarded person live after he or she becomes an adult? Most persons leave home, and so should mentally retarded people. Or if the retarded person is a child and has to leave home, or loses his or her parents, he should still have a home and not be placed in an institution. Therefore, homes are needed for all ages and levels of the mentally retarded. But the greatest need is for homes for adults. To provide these necessary items, group homes were developed. A group home is a residence which provides a natural home-like atmosphere for mentally retarded people. Group homes are located in the community and look like any other home. They can be large houses or part of an apartment complex. Because the number of group home residents can vary from four or five to eight or ten people, group homes are located in areas where boarding houses or apartments already exist. This is done to help them blend into the neighborhood and not become centers of attention. Buildings stay as they were before they became group homes, without a fence without a sign saying, a home for the mentally retarded. 
Group homes are the most important link in the normalization chain. Important because they give retarded people a home and a chance for a more normal way of living. Having mentally retarded and other handicapped people live in our neighborhood is not a new idea. They've been living there for years with their families. But group homes give those without families the same choice. As far as neighbors, they're, they're really great. They're much better than the neighbors we had before. They're quiet. I have no fears of living next door to them. As good as group homes are, some mentally retarded people can live in apartments go to work, and seek recreation with a minimum of advice or guidance. And these individuals do not have to be limited even to a group home environment. For them, a non-handicapped person called an advocate volunteers to assist, advise, or just be a friendly companion. These advocates help a mentally retarded person to live the most normal life a handicapped person can enjoy. For children, an alternative to group homes is an adoptive home. People who serve as adoptive parents provide a vital service and offer living conditions that are more normal and family-like than group living. But people have been slow to become adoptive parents, so a higher priority must be placed on this program. Being handicapped does not make a child less worthy of a normal life. But as important as homes are, they're only one part of a normal lifestyle. Education is also important. Mentally retarded people need an education like everybody else. Because education is part of a normal life. Education is part of normalization. Most handicapped children should be educated in public schools because public schools should be used to educate anyone who wants to learn. And because the schools already exist and have both teachers and equipment, it is less expensive and should be as natural and normal as possible. Subjects taught should be whatever will be of greatest benefit to the student. They can range from the purely academic reading and writing to whatever the student can and wants to learn. 15, 20, 25. 25 cents. Could I pay 25 cents for a 50 cent piece of candy? No. Each school day should include eating lunch in the cafeteria, plus scheduling play and recreation periods so handicapped students can meet and mingle with the other students. Handicapped children's education should not be limited to the classroom only. Physical training or therapy is often needed. Therapy, like academics, should be tailored for the individual student. For example, this little girl has trouble sitting alone, but can hold her breath and engage in swimming activities. Exercise like this will reduce or overcome many problems. Now for these reasons, normalization in education should fit the needs of each handicapped person. Another reason for educating the handicapped person is that those who can work must be employable if they are to become useful, productive citizens. To be employable, they need work skills and job experience. So part of normalization is to provide training centers where the necessary skills can be obtained. Training centers serve two purposes. The first is to act as work centers where all mentally retarded people who want jobs can get work experience and training which can range from operation of machine tools and related equipment to experience in food service that will enable them to work in cafeterias, restaurants, or butcher shops. When these students have finished their training and are ready to work, they are placed on jobs in the community, like this young man employed in this furniture factory and earning the same pay as his fellow workers. Production jobs are not the only kind of work that retarded people can do. If given a chance, they can work in beauty shops or mail rooms like this young man. The mentally retarded are good people to hire. Their work records are exceptional. They are punctual. They have less absenteeism and less job turnover than the average employee. But what about the handicapped worker who can work but not at a competitive pace? The second function of a training center is to provide a place where they can find jobs in a sheltered setting to earn money to help support themselves. 
Jobs in training centers can vary from simple tasks, such as assembling these bobbins, to working in this print shop, where these young people with cerebral palsy perform various printing operations. Even though they may work more slowly, they want to work, and so should be given a chance. The needs already mentioned for a home, an education, and a job are all vital parts of a normalized life. In addition to these basic requirements, mentally retarded people may want or need spiritual guidance to round out their lives. This includes the right to attend and be part of the church or synagogue of their choice. To be a member means being included in church activities, not just helping fill the pews. Handicapped people also have the right to be entertained. They have the right to go to theaters, visit museums, or points of interest, like this science center, or to attend sports events. But while being a spectator is fun, part of getting the most from life is participating, like these young athletes in the Special Olympics. Even if there is a risk involved, handicapped people accept these risks, because risk is present in everyday life. Handicapped people get sick like everyone else, and they have the right to receive medical attention. They're entitled to receive their medical care at the same place as everyone else does, at hospitals, in doctor's offices, or from clinics and health centers. Additional rights our mentally retarded citizens should have are the right to vote. If they are capable and want to, they should be allowed to help select their leaders in government. The whole idea of normalization, in simple terms, is that people who are mentally retarded, have epilepsy, or cerebral palsy, are entitled to as normal a life as they can manage and enjoy. A life with a choice of jobs, religious activities, education, places to live, and political beliefs that are available to everyone else. We have seen what is needed to give people with developmental handicaps a nearly normal life, and most of their needs are being guaranteed by the action of states like Georgia with their two landmark pieces of legislation. The 1968 Educational Act for Exceptional Children and the 1972 Community Services Act for the Mentally Retarded. These laws have done much to ensure our handicapped citizens a more normal life. But for normalization to be really successful will require something often hard to get, the acceptance and understanding of other people. Because it is only with the understanding and acceptance of others that a normalized life is possible for handicapped people. All anyone has to do is treat people who have epilepsy, cerebral palsy, or are mentally retarded as they deserve to be treated, as human beings who want neither pity nor a free ride. They simply want a chance.